The disappearance of young Madeline, at only three years old, on May 3, 2007, left an indelible mark not only on the McCann family, but also on Portuguese society as a whole. However, even before Madeline was born, another case with a similar plot affected the Teixeira Mendonça family, the disappearance of 11-year-old Rui Pedro. On March 4, 1998, around 2 p.m., young Rui Pedro took his bicycle and pedaled to his mother's workplace, located near the family's home in Lusada, in the Porto district of Portugal. The boy had gone to ask permission to spend the afternoon with his 22-year-old friend, Afonso Diaz. However, the request was denied, and Filomena Teixeira told him to play in an abandoned lot outside the office. The boy's disappearance was only noticed hours later when Rui Pedro's tutor called the parents, questioning why he hadn't attended the 5 p.m. class. Frantic, the search for Rui Pedro began. When the police were called, Filomena reported the earlier request the boy had made to her. As a result, Afonso was called in for questioning. In a visibly disturbed emotional state, he claimed not to know Rui's whereabouts, but suggested that the police should close the borders. Later, the boy's cousin, João André Mendonça, told the police that he, the boy, and Diaz had a conversation in which Afonso invited them to meet a prostitute, but the young boy had not attended due to his mother's refusal. At this point, the Portuguese police were already criticized for two reasons, the delay in initiating an investigation and reducing the search due to a lack of reliable leads. However, the case garnered so much public interest that the police began to receive numerous calls about possible sightings of Rui Pedro. Later, the prostitute Alcina Diaz confirmed that Afonso had taken the young boy to meet her and the friend had paid her to have sex with Rui. The sex worker stated that the boy was extremely nervous and crying when he left the vehicle, claiming he had been forced to meet her. Alcina further added that she tried to calm him down and asked if his mother knew where he was, to which he replied, no. Afterward, the boy returned to Afonso's car and they drove away, never to be seen again. In one of the calls she received, Philomena claimed to have recognized her son's voice and the call was quickly disconnected. According to the family, the police did not consider these leads relevant and the authorities were being bureaucratic, negligent, and lazy, always one step behind even investigative reporters. Over the years, there has been much turmoil in the search for Rui and some sightings. One of them occurred in April 1998 at Euro Disney. In a photo of political commentator Nuno Rogerio's family, a boy very similar to Rui is seen in the background, next to a middle-aged man in a red coat. The photo was analyzed by experts, but there were no conclusive results. In September 1998, an international police operation known as the Cathedral Operation seized child pornography material from a club known as the Wonderland Club, which had members in the United States, Australia, and various European countries. In this operation, 750,000 images and videos featuring over 1-200 different children were confiscated. Few children were identified, and there are indications that one of the involved pedophiles resided in Portugal. Journalist Ana Leal, who worked for TVI, was one of the professionals leading the way in the investigations. In 2002, she came into contact with images from this operation and contacted the police after seeing a black and white photo of a child tied up, gagged, and showing signs of torture. The family identified the boy as Rui Pedro, but in the following years, additional forensic analyses yielded inconclusive results, and the material was once again disregarded. However, later, with intelligent analysis using a facial mapping program, it was confirmed that the images indeed featured Rui Pedro. However, when Madeline's case came to light, an anonymous source in Switzerland overheard a boy saying in a restaurant, I am also kidnapped. I am from Famalicão, and no one is looking for me. Portuguese authorities, however, stated that the lead was not consistent. In November 2011, Afonso Dias was brought to trial. The hearing was notable for being the first time Alcina identified him before the authorities. The sex worker allegedly tried to provide her statement to the police long before, but as she couldn't identify Dias by name, her version was never heard. The following year, he was ultimately acquitted due to lack of evidence. However, in 2014, he was retried, convicted of three years in prison for corrupting a minor, as a result of him coercing Rui Pedro into a sexual relationship with Alcina. Still, he was never implicated in the disappearance of the young boy. Rui Pedro's mother, Filomena Teixeira, consistently claimed that the investigation into her son's disappearance was never conducted properly. 
She argued that the police never pursued the leads they received, failed to interview neighbors, and even neglected to examine Afonso Diaz's car in which the boy had entered. In response, Filomena took matters into her own hands, contacting hospitals and even traveling multiple times outside of Portugal in search of her son, notably in Switzerland. When flaws in the investigation were finally acknowledged, she stated, It served to confirm that what I said was true. For 13 years they called me crazy, and now, after all this time, they come to agree with me. After all, I wasn't crazy, I was right. I always said they were going the wrong way, that they weren't searching, that they weren't doing anything. The family's lawyer, Ricardo Sa Fernandez, added to the mother's statement, We were shocked by what was said in this court. We learned that from the very beginning. The inspectors knew about the existence of the prostituti Alcina Diaz, but they never formally interviewed her and justified this as an oversight. Rui Pedro's father, Manuel Mendonça, believed that Afonso Diaz might reveal something about their son while in prison. However, contrary to this, Diaz had an easier life, being able to choose a prison that resembled more of a hotel. In 2018, the case reached its 20-year mark and became statute barred, leading to Rui Pedro being automatically presumed dead under Portuguese laws. Nevertheless, Rui's family still holds hope that he is alive and maintains websites and contacts to gather information. Now, at 33 years old, how do you look? How are you? Congratulations, my son, wherever you are, receiving this tight hug that's so uniquely ours and many little kisses. I'll wait for you until eternity. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe to the channel for more content. Give it a thumbs up and share your thoughts in the comments. Your engagement is crucial in building a vibrant community. I'm signing off for now. Until next time, goodbye.